Welcome to Pure Mind Magic, the show to evolve your mind. Our mind is the most powerful thing we have, but no one teaches us how to use it. When we find out how, we're ready to create magic in life and in business. Learn real mindset secrets from brilliant minds around the world to change your mindset and income level forever. With every decision you make, you create your future. What is your next move? Now, welcome your host. Host, international magician, speaker, and podcast performance consultant, Jennifer S. Royal. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Pure Mind Magic and Interview Friday with my guest today, Dr. Danny Pressel. He is an international speaker and on a very amazing mission because he is bringing back people the joy of reading. So we will dive deep into books and book recommendation and how you find the excitement around books again. He is describing books as passport to the world. And I just love this expression because I'm a huge fan of books and I'm collecting all of them in my personal library that is growing on a daily basis. Dr. Danny Brussel works with big names like Disney and Paramount, helping their employees to love reading again. So you will learn a lot in this episode evolving around books. Maybe you're also into podcasting, what I hope you are while listening to this. Then you can grab a copy of my podcast listening journal. I designed that especially for podcast lovers because then you can capture all the great ideas, resources and links that you are listening to in podcast episodes and stay very organized so you have a system in place and know exactly what information you get in which episode on what podcast. So I didn't find this somewhere else. This is why I decided I created myself and now it's your chance to get it, as I said, from Amazon. There's a link directly below this episode and you can get it today. Now we are ready to talk about books and changing the world with the written world. And here is my guest, Dr. Danny Brussel. Hi, Danny. Welcome to Pure Mind Magic. Thank you so much for having me, Victoria. And thank you for all that you do for your listeners. Thank you so much, Danny. It's really a pleasure to have you as my guest today. And I can't wait to discuss with you something I really love, and that is books. And I actually learned all my magic knowledge when I first started out from magic books. Now, of course, we have also <laughs> videos and YouTube. But uh -huh. when I was seven years old, there were magic books. Well, I, I shared that same fascination, Victoria. The difference is you actually did something with it and I just kind of screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> But now you are kind of the expert on reading and making people read. But Danny, you can explain that better in your words. Well, thanks, Victoria. I, uh, I taught for about 25 years in the inner city uh, uh, working with uh, students that uh, it wasn't that they were necessarily – Uh, people that hated that that had a trouble trouble reading they just didn't like reading and that's what I always uh, tell audiences is uh, I think schools do a decent job of teaching kids how to read but uh, what good is it teaching a kid how to read if they never want to read and so my specialty is teaching kids why to read and how to engage kids uh, actually I speak to people of all ages that uh, might not like reading and uh, I think we need to also broaden our definition of reading. You and I had a nice discussion before the podcast, Victoria, about how you still love physical hard copy books. And I'm exactly the same way. I love physical hard copy books, but uh, my wife is exactly the opposite. She actually has her Kindle everywhere she goes. And so when people ask me, uh, well, which is better, uh, e-reading or, or uh, hard books, I always say yes. It really just depends on the person. I mean, uh, you and I uh, have that same attraction to the, the physical hard copy books, but I can tell you, uh, my wife, uh, she's from Singapore. So whenever we f fly to Singapore, I always have to load up about 20 books in my, in my luggage, whereas she only has that one pound Kindle. That's very handy. 
Uh, secondly, at night when uh, when I'm reading, I always have my lamp on. And it drives her nuts because she doesn't need a lamp because her Kindle lights up. And then third, I'm getting I'm getting on in years, Victoria, and uh, it's difficult for me to read the print and books off. And and uh, my wife never has that problem because with the Kindle you can adjust the font size. Uh, uh, so there's there's definitely pros and cons to any type of reading. Uh, but that's really what I I love to do is uh, I can find uh, a book for anybody, and that's why uh, I created. Uh, it's on Google. It's Google's largest uh, book club for uh, cool short book recommendations. It's called lazyreaders.com and uh, if any of your listeners want to subscribe it's a free subscription once a month for the rest of your life I send you uh, about 10 uh, uh, short re book recommendations books uh, that that are uh, under 250 pages three or four adult level three or four young adult level and three or four children's level books uh, it's basically short books for busy people because what drives me nuts is when people tell me they have no time to read I always say well who has time to read after you watch the game on TV and you go have a couple of beers and you go do your shopping? I mean, who has time to read? I, I always tell this to parents, you know, kids aren't stupid. If they don't see us reading, they're never going to be reading. So really one of the best tips I give to people, if you, if you really want to be a reader, you need to surround yourself with readers. That is so true. I, true. I couldn't agree more with you on that. And I think, Danny, there's really some magic when it comes to books. And I also love being in the library. So just having this feeling to be in the middle of all this knowledge and wisdom that is stored there. And the interesting thing is that it is said that Almost every really successful person on this planet has their own library at home. And it's even with Bill Gates that he has an amazing library at home. And I think once I read that there is one book that is worth $250,000 dollars because this is a very old book that is behind glass there and he just loves being around there so danny you as an expert do you see a direct connection between loving books loving to read doing a lot of reading having your own library and being successful in life Of course, Victoria. We owe a debt of gratitude to your homeland, uh, Germany. The Gutenberg Bible uh, is really what expanded uh, the printing press so that uh, the masses could be reading. Uh, one of my mentors, a wonderful speaker who's since passed by the name of Jim Rohn, he used to say that uh, poor people have large televisions and rich people have large libraries. In my research of uh, successful people in all areas, whether it's entertainment and athletics or business and government, the one common characteristic is uh, there's plenty of readers that aren't necessarily leaders, but it is very rare, rare to find a successful leader that's not also an avid reader. There are some exceptions. I'm not going to point them out because I don't want to get political, but uh, uh, it, it's it's definitely true that, uh, that some of the most successful people in history have also been some of the most avid readers. And uh, gosh, I, I keep on thinking about uh, the young Victoria Mavis reading those magic books. I, I think that's one of the tricks that a lot of adults have to remind themselves is uh, I find a lot of adults stop reading because uh, the books stop having pictures. I think about all those magic books I used to uh, read when I was a kid. And I used to just try and figure out the pictures and how to do the uh, the tricks. And uh, uh, that's really one of the, the tips I would actually give to all of your listeners, Victoria, is just because we're older doesn't mean we should knock children's literature. I think some of the best lessons are found in children's books. Um, I had read a, um, a biography on uh, U.S. President uh, Theodore Roosevelt that said that uh, by the time he was 30 years old, he had read over 20,000 books. And so when I tell that to my kindergartners, they all go, wow. And I say, okay, kids, that means we got to start reading a lot of kid books. And so one of the tips I give to even adults is uh, if you want to become a better reader, you know, go to the library, read about 10 children's books a day. It takes you about half an hour and you can go through 10 books and they have pictures and they're really easy to understand. And I'm totally serious when I, I say that. I actually, uh, before I go to parties, uh, just to keep myself uh, sounding intelligent about world events and world leaders, I'll read a children's picture book about that subject. And it usually gives me enough pick enough information in 32 pages that makes me sound knowledgeable. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, that's very nice. And I think this is a good point you picked up there with uh, getting into this uh, children's books. I think it's a little bit about tricking yourself. Like when you start or think you should start running and you have in your mind that you just put on your running shoes and that's all. So to convince you in it, so step by step. I think it's the same with reading when you kind of lost the connection with it. And then you don't have to convince me reading. I would love to do it <laughs> all day long. And uh, I think I, I read once that also Tim Ferriss does these periods where he locks himself away for like four hours and is just reading book after book after book until he comes up with a new idea, a new book project he's doing. But what, Danny, is your secret sauce to get other people again excited about reading? Well, in my presentations, I always do book talks. And a book talk is basically um, when I was a kid uh, in in upstate New York, they used to have a TV commercial. And it was this pitch man named Crazy Eddie. And he'd say, I'm Crazy Eddie. I'm going insane. I got to get rid of all this merchandise. And he would tell you about all the things he was selling. And he got you excited about it during his commercial. And I think uh, one of the things we have to do as adults, as teachers, is to really uh, uh, sell the concept of reading to people. And so once a week, I've, I've taught all ages from uh, preschoolers all the way up to rocket scientists. And uh, on Monday, I always do what I call a book talk, where I share about uh, 20 to 25 titles of books that I'm interested in reading. And uh, then I always ask uh, all of my students uh, to tell me what they're reading and what they love, what are their favorite books. And I find in those types of conversations, almost everybody in the room always now has a new book that they are interested in reading about. I mean, you just did a great job. Of doing that, Victoria, you talked about Tim Ferriss, where I, I mean, I think uh, any of his books, but especially the four hour work week uh, are wonderful books. Now, they might be intimidating to a lot of people because they're usually very long. He writes, uh, uh, you know, 600 to 800 page books. And I always say, well, you don't have to eat everything in the buffet. You know, sometimes when you're reading a book, uh, maybe what you really need to just set your goal as is uh, before I go to bed, I'm going to read something positive by Tim Ferriss for 10 minutes. So I'm going to read uh, 10 pages of Tim Ferriss. And if it's a 600 page book, that means within two months, I will finish this Tim Ferriss book. And you're going to see the progress that way. That's that's really one of the reasons I came up with the Lazy Readers Book Club is uh, I want to emphasize short books because a lot of people, they feel intimidated because they'll read Dostoevsky and uh, chapter one is on page one and chapter two is on page 835 and they don't feel like they're making any progress. And that's why I love authors. Like if I was reading fiction, I'd read like a John Grisham book. I, I've always said the reason John Grisham, one of the reasons that he's so uh, popular with readers is you'll be on page 143, but you're already on chapter 70 because all of his chapters are like two to six pages long. And he's so masterful with that. Again, that's why I love children's books is I can read a, a book with my, my youngest daughter now is nine years old. And so uh, I'll read in bed with her and I feel quite informed and, uh, and, I, I feel like I'm making progress every night reading different uh, – now we, we've gone to chapter books. But uh, before, I used to always read uh, picture books to her, and I could read like three or four books a night before I went to bed with her. And I always felt like, wow, I read three or four books today. So uh, those are the types of, of tips, uh, uh, the secret sauce. Uh, and, and again – I, I guess I'm going to sound like a promo with you for, for Tim Ferriss, Victoria. Uh, but Tim is very good about that. Is he, he absorbs lots of information. He's, he's very curious. And that's what I love about readers is, is readers are very curious and they're interested uh, in finding out. I mean, uh, when I, I knew I was going to come on your show, Victoria, I'm like, okay, I got to start reading more about uh, different magicians. And so I read uh, a biography on David Copperfield. I read a, a biography on David Blaine. And uh, I read this article on uh, on Siegfried and Roy. And it was just fascinating to me uh, how these people started and all the different things that go into uh, creating an illusion and the mindset of these people. And um, that's that's what I love about books. It gives you different points of view. And that's why I've always said the most successful leaders are readers is because they see the world through uh, multiple lenses rather than just a single lens. 
Yes, absolutely true. And I appreciate like you did your homework before coming to the show. <laughs> Very nice. So, Danny, looking back, what would you say? How many books have you already read up to this day? I, I don't like to do that with people, Victoria, just because it intimidates a lot of people. Because I, I once had a kid and... Um, He had only read I, – I, I tried to get all the kids um, – a good friend of mine, Donna Lynn Miller, she has this uh, wonderful book. Gosh, and I'm forgetting the name of it. Jeez, how am I doing that? Uh, oh, the, uh, the Book Whisperer is the name of her book. And uh, she's a sixth-grade teacher, and she gets kids excited about reading like me. And uh, there's, this, there's this story that I love to tell that uh, there is – Uh, I, I had adopted what Donna Lynn had said, and so uh, she tries to get all of her students to read 40 novels a year, which for a, a 12-year-old is quite a challenge. Uh, most of these kids haven't read 40 novels in their entire lives. And uh, at the end of the first semester, there was this little boy, and he had only read six books, six novels, and um, he was all upset and uh He said, oh, I'm, I'm way behind everybody. And I said, well, how many novels have you read up until before you started this class? And he's like, oh, I, I never read a novel. And I'm like, well, you like baseball. Look at your batting average. You just increased your batting average by 6,000 percent. You've read six novels. You're doing great. And that it was that little push that got him reading even more. Um, You know, I was really intimidated when I, I had read that uh, Teddy Roosevelt had read 20,000 books by the end of uh, by the time he was 30 years old. I said, okay, well, the way I'm going to do I'm going to change that is I'm going to read a lot of kid books. And so I read a lot of books a year, Victoria, a lot of books, but they're not necessarily long books. Uh, and I think people have to redefine themselves as readers is, yes, reading can be uh, right now I'm reading Don Quixote because I said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bite the bullet. I'm going to start reading some of the classics. And Don Quixote is small print and it's 800 pages long. Uh, but the nice thing is he actually broke the book into small little uh, chapters. So it's actually a lot more readable than I thought it would be. But normally I'll, I'll read something that's very, very short. Um, uh, I just read a book by um, – Uh, Gretchen Rubin, who's a wonderful uh, writer, she she wrote a book called The Happiness. I think it was The Happiness Project. The book I just read by her was called uh, uh, – geez, I'm, I'm forgetting. I think it was called uh, Better Than Before. Um, and it, 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 taught, it talked about how to create habit formation. Before that, uh, I mean I, I try to read at least a book a day. Uh, and again, folks, if, if you don't – hit that novel every day, then read a, a children's picture book and you got your book a day. Um, the book I read a couple of days ago was called uh, High Endurance by David Brashears. He was uh, the the filmmaker for IMAX that filmed the Everest movie when there was the uh, the tragic, uh, the deaths on uh, Mount Everest back in 1996. Uh, before that, I was reading a, uh, a book about uh, – Uh, President Ford called uh, Write It When I'm Gone, uh, which was a fascinating book. So I, I try to read a book a day. Uh, I've read a lot of books, but uh, uh, I don't want that ever to intimidate people. And I always, again, uh, emphasize to people, hey, if you're having a tough day, go, uh, go get one of those uh, picture books that has no words, and that counts as a book read. So uh, that's what people should be aiming for is uh, – Uh, it's kind of like good eating habits is the same as good reading habits is, uh, you might have a day where, uh, you drink too much beer or you have, uh, uh, too many, uh, too many, too much to eat. Uh, but you just, you just, uh, refocus the next day and start again. Mm. So I see you are like me. You like uh, keeping secrets to yourself about the number. <laughs> so I leave it like that. And I, I mean, we could do the math about one book a day. So uh, with uh, 365 <laughs> days a year and uh, counting. But uh, let's turn the question a little bit to from all the books you have read. What would you say, Danny, are like the three best books when it comes to mindset and and how our mind and brain works? Oh, wow. That's a good question, Victoria. It's a horrible question for a person that reads a lot because uh, now I have to I have to select from uh, uh, various – okay, well, I'm going to um, – so since my book club, I, I give recommendations for, for children's picture books, young adult uh, teenager books, and for adult books. Uh, um, and I know after listening to your podcast, you got a lot of great personal development books that have been recommended on this podcast. I'm going to go in a totally different direction and, and give books that uh, 
might sound a little bit different to people. And so for a children's picture book uh, that I that had a, a tremendous effect on me, I'd recommend Where the Wild Things Are by Maurice Sendak. Uh, have you read that book, Victoria? Not yet. Oh, it's a wonderful. And I, I'm sure it's probably not nearly as popular in Germany as it is uh, here in the States, but it was written... Uh, Gosh, I think back in the 1960s, and it's about a, a little boy who uh, is uh, misbehaving, and so his mother sends him to uh, bed without his supper. And so while he's in his bedroom, he imagines an entire uh, uh, forest growing in his room, and he, he travels on a boat to this this land where the wild things are, and there's these monsters that try to scare him, and he growls back at them, and they're scared of him, and so they make him their king, and uh, he leads them in all these adventures, but then he starts to miss home, and they don't want him to leave, but he he uh, he takes his boat back home, and he he wakes up in his bed, and his, his dinner is waiting for him, and uh, I just love the illustrations in that book, and the reason I'd recommend it to your readers, uh, Victoria, is because it really uh, spurns the imagination. I think probably all of us, uh, you would be a perfect example, Victoria, as a magician, you're always trying to think of a, a, a new illu illusion that's going to captivate people's minds. Uh, I don't know many um, illusionists and magicians who, who just do the same card trick for 20 years. They're constantly trying to uh, push the envelope and be a little bit more creative. And so uh, Where the Wild Things Are, I love that book because it really uh, spurns creativity. Uh, I always hate telling people uh, when I was a teenager, I, I hated reading growing up. And that's why it's ironic that I'm a, I'm a reading specialist now. Uh, my my dad was a librarian and he thinks it's hilarious that I, I love reading now because when I was a kid, I always hated public libraries because they always smelt funny. They always uh, had uncomfortable furniture. There was always some elderly woman telling me to be quiet. And there was always some uh, freaky guy that thought he was a vampire hanging out by the bookshelves. It always freaked me out. I always thought the library was the scariest place on earth. Um, but when I started teaching in the inner city, I saw that a lot of my students didn't have the same access to uh, reading materials that I had. And I, I really became ashamed of myself that, uh, wow, I had these opportunities and I took them for granted. When I was a teenager, the one book that actually stood out for me was uh, To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. And I know it's a famous book, but it's a little bit different for this uh, podcast, I think. Um, and the reason I love, uh, have you read that one, Victoria? No. Ah, gosh, again, I got, <laughs> I, I, I should have prepared and come up with some, some of the more, the more uh, popular German titles. Um, uh, this is, again, is a, a classic in the United States. Um, it's been on the bestseller list for over 50 years. There's now, uh, they just opened up a, uh, a play on Broadway based on To Kill a Mockingbird. And uh, it's uh, basically uh, takes place in the South in uh, either either the 1920s or maybe during the Great Depression, and it's told through the eyes of this little girl named Scout, and, and uh, her father is an attorney in this small town in, in the southern United States in Alabama, and he he is uh, he has to defend an African-American man who's falsely accused of raping a white woman, and um, uh, it's really an incredible story about childhood, but about uh, a child idolizing her father, and her father's name is Atticus Finch, and he's probably uh, one of the most amazing human beings you'll ever read about. He just had so much integrity. And um, that book just came to mind because nowadays uh, we don't have a lot of people with integrity nowadays. Uh, um, and I think it's something to, to really remind ourselves that integrity matters. Your character is something that's very important. And so I'd, I'd recommend to all of your listeners to, uh, to read To Kill a Mockingbird. It's really, uh, every time I read that book, it, it touches me. And then I'll go in a totally different, uh, <laughs> totally different uh, uh, direction for my adult book. I'm, I'm going to give you one, and I don't even know if I, I can justify this book, but uh, uh, the book is called uh, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. And uh, have you read that one, Victoria? Not yet, but okay, sounds well, interesting. This is, this is fine. This is a good challenge for you. I've given you three <laughs> books that you can go read. Well, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, I don't even think it's 200 pages. It's a very short book. And um, that book, I think every single page I had to stop reading because I was laughing so hard. The tears were coming out of my eyes. Uh, it's just basically uh, the guy that wrote it, Douglas Adams, I was uh, reading an interview with him. Uh, and unfortunately, he's passed away. He's a great author. 
a uh, very funny author, but when he was hitchhiking and backpacking through uh, Europe back in the 1970s, he had some guide called like the Hitchhiker's Guide to Europe, and he was uh, he he couldn't afford a hostel room one night, and so he's looking up at the stars, and he's like, oh, we really need a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and so it's this funny story about uh, an alien that's been living on Earth who's been uh, 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 filling out his book about. Uh, it's a travel guide, and uh, basically his entry for Earth is harmless. Uh, that it's it, it, it turns out the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is the best-selling uh, uh, book in the history of the universe, and uh, uh, it shows uh, all this information about different planets. It's basically about uh, uh, the alien's name is Ford Prefect, and the uh, the human is Arthur Dent. And uh, Ford saves Arthur before um, aliens blow up Earth to build a new uh, uh, like a, a new freeway in the in the in the galaxy, and uh, it's about their adventures throughout the uh, throughout the universe. And it's just uh, it just made me laugh. And I guess the reason I'd recommend that to your listeners, Victoria, is I just see uh, too much negativity on the planet right now, and uh, a lot of us are have to remember that uh, we have a lot more in common than we do uh, different. And uh, the one thing I know everybody has in common is the ability to laugh. And uh, I think it's probably really good for all of us to spend some time laughing every single day. And so I, I do that with, with books and, and with movies. And uh, uh, yeah, those are, those are three. Uh, I know that nobody else will probably uh, ever recommend on your podcast. I mean, I could go into all the I, – I, I, like you, I read tons of personal development and self-help and, um, and inspirational and biographies. And I think people have to read those things. But sometimes you also have to read fiction to, uh, to uh, stimulate your mind. Yes, that's absolutely right. And those were great tips and really unique. You are right. <laughs> <laughs> no one ever recommended them on the show so far. So yeah, that that's perfect. So Danny, besides reading so much, you're also traveling the world and really getting people into reading again, energizing yeah. them to dream bigger, read more books. And you have even clients like Disney and Paramount. How did that come about? Well, it's really wonderful, Victoria. I've, uh, I've been blessed to get to work with lots of wonderful organizations. And uh, I used to have my own nonprofit, uh, which built uh, school libraries in uh, in inner city Los Angeles. And then because of those efforts, uh, it attracted the attention of another nonprofit that created uh, uh, school libraries throughout Los Angeles. Um, and they put me they, – they made me their trainer. And so I would work with uh, – uh, the different uh, I worked with over 10,000 parents and uh, community volunteers who wanted to work one on one with struggling and reluctant readers in a lot of these inner city classrooms. And um, there's lots of wonderful companies out there that never try to uh, uh, take credit for all the good things that they're doing. And among them, you suggested were uh, uh, Disney and um, Paramount Pictures. I, I mean, living in Los Angeles, I'm with a lot of movie studios. I've worked with pretty much all the movie studios with uh, their company uh, uh, employees, uh, and and they're always uh, doing all kinds of wonderful things to uh, give back to the community. And uh, uh, that's one of the things I absolutely love about what I do is I've 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 been reaffirmed in my faith of humankind uh, you read the newspaper and there's always these negative things about people and uh, i find that there's a lot of uh, good being done so uh, uh disney was actually great because um, uh, i did a training for their employees and uh, uh there were supposed to be uh, hundreds of people there and only six people showed up to my training but one of them was the uh, personal assistant to uh the ceo of the company and uh through that we were able to uh create uh, several more libraries because of the disney foundation so that was wonderful uh, uh it was wonderful to work with them and paramount was the same thing uh, uh I, I find usually uh, you hear all the negatives about a lot of these corporations and uh, when you actually just build one-on-one -on -one relationships with people, people are people and uh, it's been a blessing. As far as going around the world, that's been uh, – that's my passion is uh, I've always been a traveler and uh, through my, my work now I get to travel. So I just spent uh, a week in Taiwan doing trainings uh, in Taiwan. Uh, uh, I was in India for a month, and India just uh, touched my heart. I spoke to 
uh, over 25,000 students in, in southeastern India, in uh, Bangalore, Chennai, and, and Uti. And uh, I, I just fell in love with India. I was, I was giving a speech to this all-girls school of a couple of thousand girls. And these uh, two girls came up to me. They were both seniors in high school. And uh, they really loved my presentation, and they had the stars in their eyes. And they, I said, well, wh- what are you going to do next? Are you going to go to uh, university maybe here, or, or maybe you'll go uh, uh, to England or to the United States? And they said, oh, no, 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 we're, we're girls. We can't, we can't go abroad. And Victoria, that just totally changed my mission in life when they said that. I, I changed the speech that day, and at the end of the speech, I looked at the girls, and I said, now is your time, ladies. I mean, uh, within the next five years, India is going to become the largest country on the planet in terms of population. I'm like, uh, you know, India is a pretty young democracy. It's only 70 years old, and yet India has already elected a woman prime minister. America, which is over 225 years old, still hasn't elected a woman leader. Um, You know, right now, there are twice as many women in India as there are people in the United States. Uh, There's actually more people in India with an advanced degree than there are people in the United States. And I just started telling them, hey, don't let anybody tell you what you cannot do. Most of the people that did something in life were told they can't. And uh, so that's what uh, really just uh, the biggest blessing in my life is getting to meet people from all over the world. Uh, I'm excited. We were talking beforehand, Victoria. I'm speaking in Switzerland uh, uh, in February, and so I hope to uh, get over to Munich and meet you. Uh, Munich, if people have not been to Munich, uh, southern Germany, Austria, and Switzerland might be the most beautiful place on the planet, uh, and the people are wonderful. And um, yeah, so uh, uh, I'm afforded the opportunity to do two of my favorite things in life. I get to read a lot, and I get to travel the world. (laughs) <laughs> Perfect match, I would say. And uh-huh. interesting that you mentioned India. So my father just returned from India and he also felt very inspired by this completely different world. And it's really amazing what he brought from there. He's always on the lookout also for like magic props and he brought some special cloths and when I sometimes watch a Bollywood movie I'm always inspired from all the colors there and Mm -hmm. how big they make it (laughs) and the budget they have I mean this is really like compared to to Hollywood it's amazing and the movies run for three hours and they have so many actors so it's crazy (laughs) and uh, I think you're right so I, I mean you are right that this this country is really growing and growing and most of the IT people come from India or are based in India. Yeah, it's it's incredible. And uh, yeah, that's another perfect opportunity. I, I was telling them, you know, everybody remembers Hollywood for, for movies, but I'm like, Hollywood actually only makes the third most movies every year. The second most are made in uh, Japan. I think, I think America releases about 425 major motion pictures a year. Japan uh, releases about 500 a year and India releases almost a thousand a year. (laughs) And they're huge. Just like you said, they're always three hours long. They have incredible dance numbers with these music and colors. And it's, and it's always the same story. It's always the two guys guys fighting yeah. over the one woman who always blinks behind the tree the banyan tree it's it's wonderful <laughs> yeah it's pure cliche but it's it's yeah, a lot of I entertainment and also a lot of fun so danny the cool thing is that you have a special gift for everyone who is listening at the moment so you have a free book called read lead and succeed i think this is all in one or whole yes. in one so where can the listeners grab it yeah, they'll get all, all of your listeners get a copy. It's it's uh, all they have to do is go to read, lead and succeed dot com and they'll download the book. It's a book that uh, you can read in an hour, but it'll change your entire life. Uh, it's a, a book. I wrote it for a, a principal of a school who didn't know how to engage his faculty. So I said, OK, I'll write you a book. So uh, once a week, I give you a concept. I give you an inspirational quote. I give you an inspirational story. 
And then I give you a book recommendation on a book you should read, but you're probably too lazy because you're an adult just like me. And so uh, for those of us that think we're too lazy to read, I also give a uh, children's picture book recommendation that demonstrates the same concept that you can read in five minutes. And again, what I'm really always trying to encourage people is to broaden their view of reading uh, because, uh, and you said this right at the beginning of the podcast, Victoria, is that the people that accomplish things are the people that are reading. Reading opens up... uh, the entire world to all of us. Uh, one of my favorite books of all time was uh, Around the World in 80 Days by Jules Verne. And one of the f- great facts about that book is Jules Verne never left France. N- he never left France his entire life. And yet he wrote the book Around the World in 80 Days. But he didn't have to leave France because he had read about all these different places. And so that's what uh, a library card will do for you. It's your passport to the world. Mm, I love that. That that is such a nice quote from you. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. You're Maybe welcome. I should write that down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Should and uh, probably I'm gonna name the episode like that. So this is just Great. beautiful, magical. Great. So, magical. Danny, I have some practical uh, questions for you too, right. because we know everyone is really stressed out nowadays. What would be your best advice when to read and really take the time out and have the concentration to really understand and taking in everything you are reading? I love that, Victoria. That's a good service you do for people. I always recommend you need to start and end your day with positive things. Uh, So I stopped watching the news Uh, after the last U.S. presidential election uh, because I was getting annoyed every single day by the negativity. And uh, so I start and end my day by reading something positive. Uh, I'll often read the Bible to start the day, and I'll end the day with reading something about uh, usually something personal development-wise or, um, you know, Tim Ferriss is a great example. Uh, There's great books out there. Uh, Made to Stick by Chip and Dan Heath is one of my favorites. Uh, I'll read anything by Malcolm Gladwell or John Maxwell, leadership speaker. Uh, But I'd I'd, I'd recommend to people to start and end their day reading something positive because there's enough negativity out there. That is so true, what you're saying there. And it kind of... Yeah, it leads to my next question about it. So what would you say, Danny, about finding the right books? I sometimes think that it's really like the book is finding you in the perfect timing and this creates kind of this magic moment and I had it several times that the same book came across my path like three times in 24 hours and then I thought okay it's now time to read this book and uh, sometimes when I I love being in bookstores all around the world so every time I'm in the United States I spend hours there just going through all the shelves and looking at all the books and then sometimes something just pops in uh, to my view and I pick it up and that's it but what is your advice maybe from a more analytical standpoint or for a different tastes what is a good way to find your next book and to yeah approach this reading process with a good motivation i think rather than being analytical i like your simple approach i think going to a bookstore or a library and just perusing the shelves that uh, oftentimes books will just jump out at you uh I've been I've been scanning my head, my brain, thinking of some good German titles. There's a book, and I'm sure you haven't read it. Uh, this book actually was phenomenal. It was called Herman the German. Uh, I read it in college, and the only reason I read it was I was walking by some uh, some bookshelves, and I saw this book called Herman the German, and I'm like, well, that's a funny title. And so then I opened it up. And there's a picture of this plane crash and the caption below, I can't remember the guy's name's wife, um, I I believe the author's name was uh, Gerard Newman. And uh, the caption below the plane crash is like, Helen and I were lucky to survive this plane crash. I'm like, what is this book about? (laughs) And uh, it was a fascinating book. It was about this uh, this. A uh, guy in Germany who uh, – the very first chapter is hilarious. He's an apprentice to a mechanic, and there's a, a guy that dies in a motorcycle accident in front of the uh, mechanic's uh, uh, um, shop. And the mechanic is a gruff guy, and he says, well, Gerard, if uh, 
if you'll stay an hour late after work every day, we can probably put that motorcycle back together and I'll let you have the motorcycle. There's a, a dead guy on it right now. It just cracked me up. And so I, I, that, that got me into the book. And it turned out this guy, Gerard Newman, he emigrated to the United States during World War II. And he was basically a real life MacGyver. He helped America win the war. He, uh, he always came up with these ideas. Uh, he, he was uh, an assistant to General uh, Chanel for the United States in China. And there was this, uh, this scene where they had to land these B-52 bombers on these gravel uh, airstrips in China. And the gravel for some, the gravel popped up and it, it screwed up. It caused all these holes in the engines. And Gerard Newman's Herman the German says, uh, go to the town and get, uh, get me 50 bicycles. And he basically takes apart the spokes from the wheels and he weaves them in these uh, holes. And he was able to save the entire mission because of this thing he thought of on the spot. And then there's a whole story about uh, how after the war, he and his wife, they build this Jeep and they basically drive the Jeep from Malaysia in Southeast Asia all the way to uh, Istanbul. It's just an amazing book. And I, it was a book that just popped out just looking at it on the shelf. And so uh, it's very dangerous for me whenever I walk into a bookstore or a library, because I usually go in intending to buy one book and I wind up buying 10 or checking out 10 <laughs> books, because um, there's all these things that interest me. <laughs> uh, I'm completely the same. So when I'm out shopping and someone is with me, I always uh, say to them, stop me from going into the bookstore because yes. then <laughs> I come out with 10 books and we have to carry them around for the whole that's shopping right. tour. So <laughs> yeah, but, but that's it. And uh, yet yeah, this is why I still believe there is this magic in books. I mean, there are whole worlds in this book, like just ink on paper. It's crazy what can happen in your mind, all the pictures and all the knowledge. And for me, it really, I think that books hold the power to really change your life. So I had that several times in my life that really picking up a book opened a completely new chapter in my life. So I remember once I've been at the airport in London flying back from a magic convention. I was I had just had time and was wandering around there and then I picked up a book there on uh, hypnosis and it was about charisma. And I always was very suspicious about hypnosis and thought, hmm, I don't know. And yes, there is something related to magic, but not really. And this, this is all fake. But then I picked it up and I studied it and it really got me onto the path about studying hypnosis. And then uh -huh. also because talking about before we started the show that you are, or, or it was in a show that your wife is from Singapore. So I got my... Her, my certificate in hypnosis in Singapore, actually. Oh, nice. And yeah, I, I learned a lot. And it all just started with picking up this one book at the airport. It was kind of crazy. And also with uh, podcasting, one night I thought about creating a podcast. And the next day I went to the library in Munich, actually, where they had one book about podcasting in German. <laughs> so it, it changed now. It's a couple of months ago. But uh, yeah, it was very interesting. I picked it up and it guided me into the world of podcasting. So Danny, what's your take about that books really hold the power to change people's lives? Well, you're a perfect example of this, Victoria. I meant to tell you this earlier is uh, when I was researching, you know, because I knew you were a magician. So I'm like, oh, I have to read some some books about women magicians. And I couldn't find many. Mm -hmm. And I was like, huh, that's interesting. And I, I, I meant to say, I'm like, well, I, I have to tell Victoria when I go on her podcast, she needs to write that book because there's a lot of little girls out there that don't realize they can become magicians. But when they see you've done it, That's what a great book does. It shows you that anybody can do it. And I think it's your responsibility now, Victoria. I, I, I think you, you started with this podcast. I, I was like, wow, that's, that's interesting. I don't know many women magicians. And uh, I, I don't know if you've been to Los Angeles. I loved uh, – I, I used to uh, have a friend that was a member of the Magic Castle. Mm -hmm. And so we'd go to the Magic Castle all the time. And even there, I had pointed out to him – this was several years ago. I said, huh, I've been coming here for years and I've never seen a woman magician. And uh, uh, to me, that's a clue to you that uh, you should write that book because you could be really uh, uh, one of the, uh, uh, you know, the pioneers of, of that. Uh, and you never know. Uh, this was the what I was telling those those girls in India was uh, 
I, you know, I'm on a mission now. I want that. I want someday for some prime minister or some barrister to say, oh, I, I did that because uh, Danny told me that uh, anything was possible, that anybody could do it. And that's what a good book should do is a book should uh, open up your your uh, mind to the possibilities that, you know what, uh, uh, there is a. Uh, a woman who was a bartender in in uh, uh, she just served beer in 1989, and then she got interested in politics during the fall of the Berlin Wall, and uh, uh, she rode the wave with her party, and she joined leadership. And uh, uh, less than less than 30 years later, Angela Merkel became one of the most powerful people in the history of uh, the planet. Um, and that's that's what. A good book does for me is it inspires me. It constantly uh, challenges me to uh, to stay curious and to be better. Nice, so nice set. And Danny, you really motivated me that I have to read uh, tonight because in my time zone it is already evening, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have a stack of books here that should be uh, I should read. And uh, by the way, are you familiar with the work of Dr. Joe Dispenza? I'm not. Okay, so I got my homework to write a magic book for girls and you got some new homework to uh, check that out. So it's really fascinating because it's yeah, kind of about quantum physics and also the mindset and how our thoughts create our reality and how we really mm -hmm. can change it. And uh, it, there's a lot of science to it and measurements and it's also the books about 400, 500 pages. But I think it's the right thing for you. And my favorite book oh, from him is really one of my favorite books of all time is called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. Oh, I love that. Great title. Yeah. So you got some homework. I, I'm writing it down right now. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I thought so. So uh, you start with, uh, yeah, showing people how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> But that's what, it, that's what a great conversation should do is uh the two the two participants in any conversation should have that homework assignment afterwards and to be curious yes you're so right so i have to ask you danny we covered your book so that the listeners can grab that but maybe you inspired some of the li of the listeners on an even deeper level so that they are interested in like hearing you speak on stage or even hire you as a speaker for their company how is it best to reach out to you and connect with you Look at you, Victoria. You're better than my pimp. So uh, if anybody is interested in having me speak, all they have to do is go to dannybrussell.com. My last name is easy to remember how to spell. It's spelled like bras, cell. And I never took any grief over that as a child. Uh, dannybrussell.com. Uh, also, uh, if any of your listeners are interested in joining the book club, uh, that's called lazyreaders.com. And uh, finally, I'll give you one more. Uh, I, the reason I was in India is I started a new company called Read Better in 67 Steps.com, where every day for 67 consecutive days, I send parents a five to seven minute video showing them an idea on how to get their kid excited about reading. And our research has shown that uh, if you do this every day for 67 days with your child, uh, by the end of the program, the child's reading at about two to three grade levels better. But more importantly, I don't really care about that. What I care about is the kid is excited about reading and they want to read. Uh, I've never had to tell my own three children, go watch TV or go play that video game. And I never want to have to tell them, go read a book. I always want book to be books to be one of their choices, not something uh, that's viewed as a punishment. So uh, that's called Read Better in 67steps.com. Um, uh, I'll make sure to, to email you all this stuff, Victoria, so you have it for the show notes. And uh, if any of your listeners need ideas, I love talking about books with people and I come up with lists all the time. So uh, uh, I'll come up with a specialized list for you. I actually, I'm, I'm already coming up with one for you, Victoria, on 10 great mm. books for, for women magicians. <laughs> nice, nice. So it sounds to me, Danny, like you have to come back to the show and we have to discuss our <laughs> After we both have done our homeworks around this. I like it. It's <laughs> accountability. That's very good for you. I like that, Victoria. Thank you for that. Yes, that's it. And it would be really amazing to meet you in uh, Switzerland in person and uh, to really feel your energy and discuss more about books. Come on over. You can be my guest. I'm speaking in uh, it's Basel, Switzerland. I speak, I believe, uh, February 28th and March 1st. 
uh, to a conference of all these uh, European school leaders. So that way, I would love to meet you in person, Victoria. Great. So thanks for the invitation. This would be also interesting, I guess, for my father, because he has been a school director. And, oh, great. Uh, yeah, he was actually the one who got me into reading when I was a little girl, because I remember when we were in a bookstore in uh, Stuttgart, my hometown in Germany, then he said, you can grab whatever book you like, I pay for it. But the only thing is you have to read it. So I, <laughs> <laughs> I went for a really expensive book book that time because I th uh, thought to myself, hmm, he said he would pay for it. So I'm going to pick up. <laughs> it was a book on the private license for pilots because I was always interested in <laughs> flying. And, uh, you know, this is really niche. So it was highly expensive that time. And uh, yeah, without anything, he paid for it. And I went home and I studied it. I read it. And uh, yeah, this is kind of how my journey into the world of books started. Isn't that the way it always is, though? I always tell people, most people learned how to read well before they were in school. It was usually a, a parent or a, a grandparent or an auntie or an uncle that uh, spent that time and uh, was important to you, significant to you. So uh, your dad was, your papa was important to you. And so uh, to impress him, you became a reader. I love that. <laughs> yes, and also a magician because he came with me to all these magic conventions and also helped me to find the right magic books. And now it's uh, his guilt that all my shelves are bending down because of the <laughs> load of books that are there. So yeah, you know, it all happens in, in our childhood normally. So where the decisions are made. So Danny, this I'm sure we will have a great conversation when we meet in person there. So I will note it in my calendar and also let my listeners know that there is an there is a possibility to meet you so it was really great to have you as a guest on pure mind magic today and i'm almost 100% sure that you will be back thank you so much victoria and thanks for all that you do and i'm looking forward to uh, reading the book that you write <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining me today with Dr. Danny Brussel. And I hope you too feel now very motivated to grab your favorite book or just order a new book that is on your list for quite some time. I highly recommend you doing this. Next week on Wednesday, I have another midweek motivation for you. And I decided to do this one on a vibrational workout. Why I got this idea and what's behind this expression, you will learn next Wednesday. Make sure to subscribe to the show and also would be amazing if you could leave a short rating, whether it's on Apple Podcasts or Stitcher or directly on Podbean. Up to you, but that really helps a lot to grow the show. I hope you do have a magical weekend starting now. Talk to you next time. Until then, create some magic. 